In the previous program, I had shown you how you can write a number of names using f printf. Let us say for some reason we want to read the names back. For that, we will be using a function provided as a part of the C library called as f scanf. It is very similar to scanf except that it is used for reading from files on the disk. So, what I am doing is I have defined an array of characters called as name size 50. FPTR is a pointer to a file type of a structure. Using FPTR, I use a function called fopen to open a file. I have renamed the file called as fprintf.txt to myname.txt. I am going to read one name at a time. Okay, first I am opening the file. If for any reason there is a problem opening it for reading, this condition will become true and I will do a return or quit from this particular program. Now assume there is no problem opening the file. Then I will keep reading from the file one string at a time as long as I don't encounter the null character or I don't encounter end of file marker. So what I am going to do is I am going to say f scanf. All right. Then what is the first parameter for f scanf? fptr. Then you should always indicate the format specifier. So what I am going to do is I am going to read one name and add a backslash n to it and store it in name. So the first time name is going to be read. I will show you the text name is going to be read using this file pointer. It is going to be stored in this name array. After the name is read n backslash n is going to be added to that particular line. I will tell you the reason for the backslash n. So as long as this f scanf is not returning the end of file, I am going to keep reading. The return value is going to be compared with end of file. So as long as it is not end of file, I can simply use the printf to print the name on the screen to see show you the file which was created, how you read it back. First, let me take this to the online GDB compiler. I'll do a complete explanation there and then we'll proceed to run this particular piece of program and see how it works. First thing first, all right. All right, I need to stop the previous program. Uh, that's why it's not letting me quit. All right, so I'll delete this printf. Yes. So if you see here, what I'm going to do here is I'm first going to copy this particular program. All right. Now, in this particular program, the source of my input is a file by name myname.txt. Here is that file myname.txt. You can easily create this file on the online cloud. So I have created Arjun, Rajesh, Aruna, Shweta and let's add one more name. Let's say Raman, Ramandeep. All right. And press enter. So this is my file which has been created by me. It's got five names and sixth is an empty or indicating end of the input. So now what is happening in here is using this pointer to a file, I'm opening a file. If there is no problem, this will never get executed. I will come here fscanf what it will do is the file pointer will initially refer to Arjun. It will read Arjun. So if you had scanf, scanf also would read till it encounters a space or an enter key. Because after Arjun there is an enter key, scanf will only read Arjun. And Arjun is going to be stored in name. But after Arjun I have added an enter key so that when I am printing it after Arjun there is a new line otherwise all the names will stick together and you may not be able to see clearly. I have put this enter key so that you see one name at a time on the output screen. So f scanf is keeps on going on reading one name that is one name per line storing it in name. The minute it reads all the names after it reads Ramandeep it encounters end of file. So f scanf will return end of file value. So this and this will match now indicating that we have reached end of file. Once we reached end of file, we're just going to print the name and we are going to alt. I hope you understand what this is working. It's reading line by line using fscanf, very similar to scanf. fptr is the link between your file and my program. So fptr is referring to the current position of the data. It's reading the data one at a time, storing it in name. As long as we have not reached end of file, I'm going to print the name. The minute we reach end of file, we are going to come and close the file. Very important to close the file because it can sometimes corrupt the file if you fail to close it. So let's try to run this program and see what happens. All right, so here if you see, now what has happened is while reading, 
I have read with the backslash n, but while printing, I should have put this backslash n for you to see that separation. All right. So let's rerun it again. Okay. I don't think I need this backslash n in scanf. So what I'm doing is I'm reading the name and each reading each name and it's being stored in name. And I'm printing the name with the backslash n so that you're seeing one name at a time. After Ramandeep, it is not reading any line. So let's see here. Once you run it, just see what happens. So it's reading Arjun, Rajesh, Aruna, Shweta, Ramandeep. After Ramandeep, it's indicating end of the file. This condition is becoming false and it is coming out. So as long as it's not end of file, I'm going to read one name, print the name, read a name, print a name, read a name, print a name. The minute I encounter end of the file, this condition will happen to be true and I will come out of the loop. So I hope you understand how f scanf is used for reading one string at a time from the file. Most important thing you need to understand here is f scanf will stop reading the minute it encounters a space or a new line. So I'll show you that with a little bit of change. Now let's see, I enter Arun and Rima, okay, and I enter, let's say, Shoba, okay, just three names. So you will see, first what will happen is it will read Arun, all right, it will, sorry, it will read Arjun, it will print Arjun, it will read Rima, print Rima, it will read Shoba and print Shoba, all right. So on each of these input data is going to be printed on one line. All right, so now I hope you can see it. Now you can see it. After Arjun, there was a space. So just like scanf, it only read Arjun. After that, it went and read Rima. After Rima, there was a space. So it stopped reading after Rima. After Shoba, there was an enter. So it stopped reading after Shoba. So scanf, scanf, like scanf, will read till the first space tab or a new line. So I hope you have understood the working of a f scanf. Please try to look at this code along with the explanation prior to this particular video.